So last time we had an introduction to what is basically a jet engine. And uh, we talked about how that gives us thrust. So what were the major components? We had a diffuser, we had a compressor, a combustor, a turbine, and a nozzle. And the goal of the uh, gas turbine or jet engine for aircraft propulsion is to come out with a very high exit speed. Why? Because essentially the mass flow rate times that exit speed gives us the thrust. If the inlet speed is negligible, if it's not, well then we just have the difference. And that's our thrust equation. So to get a high exit speed, what do you want? You want a high exit kinetic energy. And that's the purpose of a nozzle. The nozzle basically converts that high inlet pressure, high inlet enthalpy into a lower exit pressure. I mean, it, it needs the exit pressure to be lower than inlet pressure. It helps if it's a higher pressure. But it, it, it comes out with a lower temperature, hence a higher kinetic energy. We want to be able to sketch it on a temperature entropy diagram. So for an ideal gas, like air, going through the jet engine on a temperature entropy diagram, we're going to have distinct pressures. The lowest pressure is pressure A, the inlet, which is also equal to the pressure at B. So we'll put on a very low line of constant pressure. Pressure A is equal to the pressure B. Now, we go through the diffuser. Is there a pressure increase in the diffuser? Yes. We could model it with some isentropic efficiency, but let's just assume that it's a decent diffuser. Isentropic efficiency is 100%. There's no irreversibilities. And so where do we move from state A? We move up to state 1. And 1 is at a different pressure. It's at P1, which is higher. Then we're going to actually go across that compressor. The pressure ratio across the compressor is P2 divided by P1, some specified amount. And so we're going to go up to a high pressure. Let's call this P2, which is also equal to P3. Now, when we go from 1 to 2, we could do it isentropically. If they gave us a compressor isentropic efficiency, then we'll have state 2 actual, a little to the side. I like to say state 2S and state 2A for actual. The book doesn't put an A on it. They just put state 2. Now, we go through the burner. We come out with the highest temperature, T3. Usually that's specified from metallurgical considerations. And then the hard part, we put it through the turbine. You're used to letting that pressure ratio across the turbine be the inverse of the pressure ratio across the compressor, but it's not. It is not. So let's say, for example, this was, I'm just throw out some numbers, 100 kilopascal, and the pressure ratio is 9. What is pressure 2? 900 kilopascal. What's the pressure at 3? 900 kilopascal. Then the students will look at the pressure of 4, and they'll say, oh, the pressure of 4 is back down to 100 kilopascal. Is the pressure at 4 100 kilopascal? No. And why not? Because we're not making power, shaft power, out of it. The turbine's just making enough shaft power to run the compressor. And so that's very new. That's novel. That's pretty unique for you at this stage. So what you have to remember is, is the work that comes out of that turbine, the actual work out of that turbine, is precisely the same as the work that required to run the compressor, and it's the actual work to run the compressor. So if you do have these isentropic efficiencies, it may be conceptually a little more challenging, but, uh, but there it is. So the pressure at 4 is not you know, similar to the pressure at one, it's a lot higher because we want it as high as possible to feed it through the nozzle and to make a great uh, thrust in the engine. So it'll come down to some intermediate pressure. Let's say this is P4. And if it was isentropic, it would go from state 3 to 4S. But if it's some irreversibilities, we would go over to 4 actual. 
And then at this point, we need to expand down through the nozzle all the way to the, the exit pressure. And so you just expand isentropically down to B. There it is. There it is on a TS diagram. Well, I'm going to probably flip back and forth between this diagram and the problem on the next page. Let's solve the problem on the next page. Uh, I read it last time, I believe. True? So we have the numbers. So let's set it up the table because that's the key to being able to calculate the exit velocity. So we have all of our states as a review. And we had the pressure in kilopascal and the temperature in Kelvin, state A. Then we went to state 1. Then we went to state 2S, 2 actual. Then state 3. Then state 4, S, 4 actual, then B. So we can put in a lot of the pressures, but not all of them. So we could put in that it was uh, 26 kilopascal on the inlet and it's 26 kilopascal on the exit. We could put in that it's 220 Kelvin on the inlet, and uh, that's about it for the pressures. Uh, the temperature, it was 700 Kelvin given for state three, the highest temperature coming out of the combustor. Okay, also oh, I usually like to add another column. It's the speed in meters per second, and they told us that it was 200 uh, meters per second on the inlet. And we really want, this is our question for part B, uh, or part A, what is the velocity at the nozzle exit? We want to calculate this velocity at B. That's what we want to calculate. All right. So um, we analyze, first of all, isentropic flow, ideal gas, constant specific heats through the diffuser. Well, but to do that, let's do an energy balance for that diffuser. Maybe I should jump back here. If I do an energy balance for the diffuser, you're getting good at this, right? So we have the inlet enthalpy plus the inlet kinetic energy is equal to the exit enthalpy. This is A, A, and then the exit enthalpy 1 plus the exit kinetic energy 1. But they say in the problem statement, the exit and the enthalpies, not the enthalpies, the kinetic energies are negligible everywhere except for the inlet and outlet. So that's zero. So what we find is that H1 is equal to HA plus kinetic energy uh, of A. Or another way to rewrite that equation is C sub P times uh, T1 minus TA is equal to the kinetic energy at A. So what's going to happen is T1 is going to be higher than TA. How much higher? T1 will be TA plus the kinetic energy coming in divided by C sub P. And for this problem, the inlet temperature was 220. And the kinetic energy is 1 half velocity squared. That's 200 meters per second squared. And then we divide by specific heat. A uh, number of ways to do it, but we have to watch a unit conversion. The specific heat constant pressure is 1.025 uh, kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. This was meters squared per second squared. This is where on the exam we want to see the units. Well, the unit conversion, and I didn't leave enough room to tuck it in right here, but it's 1,000 meters squared per second squared. It's precisely 1 kilojoule per kilogram we compute the temperature that way, and when we compute the temperature, we find that it's a 239.5. It's going to go up because the flow is slowing down. And once I know that temperature at 1, we use the other relation that it's isentropically going to be slowing down so that P1 divided by PA is equal to T1 divided by TA to the power, then you have... Uh, K over K minus 1. Does that equation look familiar? And now you get the pressure. The pressure should go up. Did it go up? Sure, it went up. 
So as you're working through these equations, I know it's easy to reciprocate something when it shouldn't be. So always, you know, oh yeah, it went up. That looks reasonable. You should know some, after working a few problems, you should have a sense for what's reasonable. Then we put it through the compressor with the pressure ratio of 8. Well, if the pressure ratio is 8, I don't multiply 26 times 8. No. We multiply 35.2 times 8, don't we? So, avoid another error that some students may make. It would be a 281.7, 281.7, 281.7. Aren't they all the same pressure? Yeah. And now, how do I calculate that temperature? Well, T2S is equal to T1 times P2 divided by P1 to the K minus 1 over K. It's the same equation, just used not for the diffuser, but used for isentropic compression through the compressor. And then we come up with 428.8. And then we use the efficiency of the compressor. So we have the T2 actual is equal to T1 plus... Normally it would be T2S minus T1, but because of the isentropic efficiency of the compressor, it's higher. True? I'm going a little fast. Hopefully some of you are following that uh, well because it looks like you are. I'm reading body language. It looks like you're following it, right? All right. So now we have the 700. We do the same thing through the... Uh, through the turbine, but we we have to be very careful here. Again, let me jump back here. What is the key thing about that turbine? The workout is exactly so. The specific workout of the turbine, look at your temperatures. Isn't that going to be H3 minus H4 actual? And what was it, what was it for the compressor? Isn't it H4? Uh, 2 actual minus H1. And what did we just calculate? We calculated, well, put in constant specific heats. Let's do constant specific heats here so that we cancel them on both sides. We have T3 minus T4 actual is equal to T2A minus T1. One equation. Where did it come from? What comes out of the turbine has to drive the compressor. You say, I don't understand where it comes from. Okay, do this. Do a large control volume right there. Do an energy balance for that large control volume, and it's all just internal work. Or do it this way. We already did the control volume around the compressor. What goes into the compressor is exactly control volume, what comes out the shaft of the turbine. Uh, hopefully this equation isn't too hard. <laughs> Maybe I'm belaboring a, a mute point or easy point. But now, look at, we know the temperature 1, temperature 2A. We know the temperature 3. All we have to do is calculate that temperature at 4A. So we calculate, see the steps in this? We're going to calculate this temperature at 4A. And let's see, that's going to be, um, write it right here, 463.2. I'm going to put a little number here. I calculate that first. Then what do I calculate? Do I go and calculate the pressure? Or do I calculate the temperature at 4S? This is really tricky. What do you think I calculate next? I'm going to use an equation just like this. This equation was basically how the isotropic efficiency of the compressor is defined, and it was used to actually calculate the temperature. So what we can do is we say, well, write that similar equation for the turbine. So for the turbine, maybe I write it, I don't know how to write it. Uh, how? Let's see, um, write it like this. The isotropic efficiency of the turbine is the... The minimum work, or not the minimum work, the maximum workout, which would have been isentropic, uh, and compared to the 
let's do h, what is it, 3 minus h4s. That'll be the maximum workout compared to h3 minus h4 actual. If we have constant specific heats, it's T3 minus T4 actual divided by T3 minus T4 isentropic. Notice, we're given the isentropic efficiency of the turbine. We're given T3, and we just calculated for actual. There's only one unknown. Give me a thumbs up if you're following that. Pretty good? So this is kind of tricky. It's kind of like, hold it. I jump down here. I calculate that first. Then I jump up, and I calculate this exit temperature. This temperature is uh, 421.7. I calculate that second. Now I can finally get the pressure. Now I can finally get the pressure, P4. Are these two pressures the same? Yep. So now I just know that if it would have been isentropic through the turbine, I would have got 421.7. Guess what I do? I come up to this type of equation right here, don't I? And so, uh, should I write it over here? I'm running out of room, but P4 divided by P3 is equal to uh, T4S divided by T3 to the power K over K minus 1. When you do that, you find that the pressure is low. It's 46.1, but it's higher than 35.2. It's so this pressure right here is 46.1, where this pressure right here was uh, 35, sorry, 35.2, and this pressure was 26, and this pressure up here was what 281.7. All right, so we have that. That's our our third thing to calculate, and then guess what? You just calculate it, the fourth thing, which is just copying it down, 46 point. That's probably the most difficult part of the property table, calculating that pressure, calculating those temperatures. Now we put it through the nozzle. What's the nozzle? Let me jump back to, since I'm running out of room. And so if we analyze the nozzle, I'll try to put it down here. We have that the enthalpy at 4 plus the kinetic energy at 4, but that's negligible, is equal to the enthalpy at B plus the kinetic energy at B, and that's what we want high. So we calculate the kinetic energy at B is equal to C sub P times T4 minus TB. How do we calculate TB? Um, well, it's a very similar equation that we've done. Again, TB is equal to T4 times the pressure ratio PB divided by P4 to the uh, K over uh, K minus, uh, no, K minus 1 over K. Isentropic flow through that nozzle. Makes sense? So once you get the TB, then you can stick into here, and you can get the kinetic energy at B. So let me fill in the numbers here. We calculate the temperature to be very hot still, 394.7, but that our kinetic energy in kilojoules per kilogram over here is now 70.41, giving us a speed of 375 meters per second. So it came in at 200. Something happened to the gas such that it came out at 375, you're going to get forward thrust out of that engine. And uh, how did we, so how, how do you get that the kinetic energy at B is one half VB squared, true? So going from here to here is pretty straightforward. Just watch out for that unit conversion of 1,000. All right. Um, I didn't write down what the kinetic energy is up here is 20.0 if you want to fill fill that table out. Now that was the hard part. So the answer for part A is the 375 meters per second. What is the thrust developed? 
The thrust is the forward thrust. The mass flow rate, which is given in the problem statement, 18 kilograms per second times VB minus VA, and that comes in at 3,154 3, newton. Look good? All right. Let me give you this in Excel. Here it is in Excel, a little easier to see all the numbers as I've laid them out. Um, so the pressure ratio, mass flow rate, specific heats, K, uh, state A, 1, all that, the pressures, the temperatures, the speed. Here was what was asked for part A. Here was what was asked for part B. And I even checked the Mach number. The Mach number is how fast is the gas coming in compared to the speed of sound at the inlet condition. And then how, what is the Mach number going out? So uh, th these are the three steps to analyze the compressor and the three steps to analyze the turbine. Kind of the isentropic efficiency and actual works and the actual work, isentropic efficiency, and the isentropic work. And I calculated the pressure ratio across that turbine. I know it should be more like the inverse but because it's coming down in pressure, but it's a 6.11 pressure ratio. So there's still a lot of pressure drop uh, from the inlet to the exit of that turbine, but it's not as high as the pressure gain in the compressor. You ready to press on? Very good.